Greetings everybody and today we're going to be proving the estimation lemma also known as the ML inequality because of this very obvious ML sitting right over here. Um, but yeah what this is estimation lemma tell us it says that the absolute value of the integral over some curve of gamma of a complex function f of z can be bounded above by m times l. Now I will have to go into a bit more detail as to what each of these parts mean. Um, this curve gamma here this is just some curve in the complex plane which can be parameterized on an interval a b this function f well it's a complex function um, but it also has to be nice and continuous and what is this m here well this m this is just an upper bound for our function f of z um, or more specifically the absolute value of f of z on the curve we're integrating which is gamma and this l finally this is the length of gamma which is the curve we're integrating. So you could imagine we have some curve in the complex plane here, parameterized um, on the interval a, b. So this is maybe t equals a and t equals b. And if we want to evaluate the integral on this curve of a function, um, well, the absolute value of the integral um, can be bounded above by the length of this curve times the maximum of the function on that curve. Um, it's kind of similar to, I think, some inequality in real analysis um, where you have your function on some interval a to b and this is bounded above by the length of the interval um, multiplied by the supremum um, which you usually call m um, you could use a supremum or any upper bound to work um, so yeah how do we go about proving this well it's very quite simple actually all we need to do is employ a parameterization so what we'll start off by doing is by noticing that every z on this curve of gamma can be written as gamma of t where t ranges from a to b now we also need to get this dz here as well so let's differentiate both sides so dz is going to be equal to well, we differentiate a gamma, so this becomes a gamma prime of t, and we're also going to multiply by dt. Okay, so we have all of this now. Let's plug everything into the integral. So now this integral that we started off with, this is equal to the absolute value of the integral. Now, instead of gamma, we're going from a to b. So we're switching our variables over to t. Now we have f of z, but z is exactly in gamma of t and a dz that becomes gamma prime of t dt. Okay, now we notice that we're integrating with respect to a real variable and we can use the integral inequality which we proved last time to move the absolute values on the outside inside of the integrand. So this becomes less than or equal to the integral from a to b of the absolute value of f of gamma of t. Um, and we can split up the absolute values as well. So we can multiply by the absolute value of the gamma prime of t. And this is integrated with respect to t. Now notice that this function f of gamma of t, this is just the values of the function along this curve of gamma. And we know this has an upper bound, which we call m. So we can say that this whole entire integral here is less than or equal to the maximum of this function, which is m, we can pull that outside of the integral because it's independent of t, times the integral from a to b of the absolute value of gamma prime of t dt. And now notice, this is actually going to give the length of gamma because you can interpret um, a gamma prime as the velocity. And if you take the absolute values over here, that just becomes the speed. So you're integrating the speed from A to B on this curve of gamma. And that's exactly the distance um, that you traveled, or in other words, the length of gamma. Um, you could do this another way by decomposing this gamma into real and imaginary parts. Um, and then yeah, doing some square root thing with the real and imaginary parts. But either way, this integral turns into the length of gamma. So this is m times the length of our curve gamma, um, but we just define that as L. So this is m times L. So that's how you prove the ML inequality. Very quite simple. Um, now, maybe an example as well, just to demonstrate how this might be useful. Um, so we're going to let, for example, 
f of z be equal to 1 over z squared plus 1. So this ML inequality you often use um, on contours or on path integrals uh, along, say, semicircles, and you want to show that in the limits as the radius of these semicircles um, go to infinity, that the integral along this curve vanish. Um, a very good example is 1 over z squared plus 1. So first of all, let's define our curve big gamma. Let's just maybe call it big gamma. Um, that's what I often use. Um, gamma of, uh, let's say, t is equal to r e to the i times t. So essentially what this gives you is just the semicircle of radius r centered at the origin. And we're going to start our t at a zero and to end up pi. So we have our curve. Um, the length of the curve, that's pretty straightforward. So the length of the curve gamma is just equal to pi times r. So that's just half the circumference of a circle. Um, and we also need the m right over here. So what's going to be the maximum of our function f of z on this circle? Um, well, let's just first of all take the absolute value of one over z squared plus one. And well, what is this? This is one over the absolute value of z squared um, plus one. And now what we're going to do is use the reverse triangle inequality. Um, I'll just recall what the reverse triangle inequality is over here. If you have the absolute value of a minus b, this is greater than or equal to um, the absolute value of the absolute value of a minus the absolute value of b. This is very useful when you're working with stuff on the denominator because you want to show that the denominator, um, I guess, is greater than something else to obtain an upper bound. So in this case, we don't quite have a minus b, um, but we can change that just by introducing a double negative. So this is z squared minus negative one. And now we can use this reverse triangle inequality. So since it's on the denominator, it's not greater than, it's less than uh, one over, we have the absolute value of the absolute value of z. And then we have a minus the absolute value of one, which is well, just one. Now we notice that on the circle, I forgot a squared here, on the circle, the absolute value of z is always going to be r. So this is going to be one over r squared minus one. So what did we just find? We found an upper bound for the value of our function on the semicircle, which is one over r squared minus one. So this tells us that if you take the absolute value of the integral over gamma, well, that's actually big gamma, of one over z squared plus one dz, this is in fact less than or equal to m times l, but what is m? It's one over r squared minus one. And what is l? It's simply pi times r, so you can multiply it up here. And yeah, this is an upper bound, um, but usually what you wanna do with this is take the limit as r approaches infinity. Um, so this in the limit as r approaches infinity just goes to zero because we have um, a quadratic on the denominator and that dominates the linear guy on the top. Um, so yeah, we can show using the ML inequality that integrals over semicircles um, vanish as we take the limit as r approaches infinity. That's one example of the estimation lemma. Usually I don't use the estimation lemma I just use a parameterization instead. Maybe I should use it more, I don't know. But um, yeah, that's the estimation lemma. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.